I mean, one of my interests, as you know, is one of my preoccupations has been with religion lately. I wrote this book, Seven Types of Atheism, you mentioned at the start. And by the way, listeners, if you've not read this book, read it. It's incredibly provocative and interesting. It's got some book. funny stories in as well. And uh, that's one of those funny stories. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, John Stuart Mill, who I spent 20 years studying when I was still in academia, was very interested in the world in the work of Auguste Comte, the right. French thinker who believed, as many people now do, I mean, the, the world is full of unwitting disciples of Auguste Comte. They believe everything he did, but or most of what he did anyway, without really realizing, because they know no history of ideas. They don't know they're just reinventing the wheel. So Comte said, and in some ways he was more intelligent than many are now, more intelligent than Pinker, for example, or Dawkins. He said, Christianity, religion, that's on the way out. What we need is a society founded on science. So that's what we need. Because science is the embodiment of experimental method of truth and, and the truth and we correct our form of errors and we make progress and so on. But he said, now here he's smarter than Pinker or but it led to absurdity. It's funny absurdity. He said, We need a religion because human beings need religions. He'd done a bit of reading about history. He didn't think the world <laughs> he, he didn't think the world started when his if he'd had a CV when his CV started. He thought there was <laughs> quite a long period before that. And so he'd seen all these religions. So we need a religion. So we've got to invent one. So he invented one called the religion of humanity, which John Stuart Mill really liked in many ways, except it was very dogmatic, which he didn't like. But in the religion of humanity, Comte said, we've got to have priests and we've got to have rituals. So he had a daily ritual based on phrenology. So during the day, you would, if you were a follower of positivism, but George Eliot was very attracted to it. The people who built the Panama Canal were very attracted to it. There was a positivist church in Liverpool, a couple in London, a lot in Brazil. There's still a positivist symbol on the Brazilian flag. It had followers in Vietnam, all over the place. But if you follow positivism, you've got to, you've got to touch your head every day a certain number of times. I think it was seven, I can't remember, but where the bumps for benevolence and progress. He, and he had, he had an unconsummated, it seems, relationship with a, a woman who had a feckless husband. And he appointed her the Virgin Mary of the new religion. And there was a shrine to her, which people had to go. So it was, you know, it was an absurdity. It was a complete absurdity, although it was very popular at the time. Or maybe just because it was absurd, that was why it was popular. But it did look at a real problem, which is that treating religion as an intellectual error which once you've shown its erroneousness, you just leave behind, is a terribly naive and empirically unsustainable view. Amen. Uh, uh, so that's seven, seven types. That's seven types of atheism. And so one of the one of the things I've noticed though is that countries that have been solidly Catholic, actually for a long time, are less prone to these woke ideas. Just as interestingly, by the way, they were much less prone to one of the worst phenomena of the 20th century, eugenics. Hmm. None of the major eugenics, pro eugenics ideas spread everywhere, but none of the major eugenics programs, which occurred in America, in Sweden, and of course in Germany, which was partly Catholic, but none of the, none of the major programs, not anywhere in France, for example, or in most of Latin America, a bit in Mexico, which had a, a progressive it's, it's, it's so, when, when so, I get accused of, believe it or not, you being a Genesis, I'm like, if you had any idea how Catholic I am, you would understand that it's so absolutely inimical to almost the only stand for. in Britain, almost the only people who were solid against eugenics were Catholics. Well, God bless them. <laughs>